big problem I have with, uh, with passing, and especially guard passing, I mean, it's a personal problem, is it's hard to stop a person who tries to scurry away. Look, for example, if you're, let's say, you start to pass Kino Shin, and it starts to like, slide backwards a bit, you'll have to follow up, follow up, follow up. And often when, you go, when, I, when I go in too fast, then I overcommit, that's when I get a counter attack. Yes? So I like to do very much, the whole idea of the, of the guard pass is called sword and shield. I'm going to use one of my hands as a sword, and with my other hand I'm going to use as a shield. But just like with a real sword and shield, don't forget, the shield can be used to strike, and the shield can be used to block, but you can also block and parry with your sword, and you can still hit with your shield. So, both of offense and defense. Now, the, the first spot we're going to start from is actually this. You're gonna, it doesn't really matter where you, where you start. You can put from De La Riva, for example. That's an easy spot. Wait for one second. So, well, this is De La Riva. And if you go inside, that, is, that would be also De La Riva, but when I'm already on the losing edge. So if I keep my knee outside, so this is actually like a neutral guard. Yeah? And the idea is this. This hand is going to be my sword. I'm going to catch this color. And my other hand, I'm going to use the shield. Now look, I'm going to give a very... Look, usually people need to grab somewhere with, with both of their arms. And for example, if I grab the pants here, what will usually happen? What can I expect? Well, you can, if I just stay here and it gets grip high, that can be useful if you stretch your leg out to this. No, push my hip away. Yeah, then I'm in trouble. See? And right now I can maybe use my hand to put the leg away. Great. But something very often also happens if you get for a, for a, for a grip right away. Pull your knee to your shoulder, please. <laughs> Then catch my, relax, catch my sleeve, and now strip the grip. Keep the leg out, keep down, and now keep pulling, keep pulling. And I'm in, in, in much trouble, see? I, I lost one of my hands, and I'm spread out. So with this hand, look, don't grip. What I'm gonna use with this hand, I'm gonna use it as a shield. He's gonna block his leg all the time with his arm, all right? So when I'm here, see? He's gonna block his leg. See, try to move the leg around a bit. See? You try to get your hook somewhere. Now, the only thing you're going to say is when you're here, isn't there a triangle? Well, yes, there is. See, that's actually the follow up part for my class. You've got to keep an open mind about this. What I, <clears throat> what I always do when I play gi, and no gi as well, in a different way, I'm always baiting a triangle. So, whenever I'm here and he goes for a triangle, go for it. And I'm here, I consider myself winning the fight still. Yeah. So, you try to close your triangle. See, this, if you're well, not too open minded about it yet, so go for it, please. It's very hard for him to, to finish the fight here. Only if he really controls this arm, go underneath. Go underneath my arm, go underneath, yeah. Here, keep it tight, see? Close your triangle. Here, and start to about get into trouble. If you don't want to go deep, too deep into the, I call it the king's gambit, so you, you, uh, you offer a triangle and, and pass from there, yeah. If you don't want to be, go too deep, in, too deep into that put still. And consider this, every time he goes for a triangle, see? and he keep your, Head high, close, close, close. You cannot even close a triangle, especially if you keep your elbow out. If you close it, there's danger for arm more. If you keep it open, so you try to triangle, go. You're gonna be quite hard, yes? <clears throat> but also know, if, if you do mess up, you go all the way in, okay? Then I have to show you to my instructor or the video from last year, where I can figure that out as well. So now, the first exercise you're gonna do, you're gonna put your knee deep. Make sure your knee stays pointed open. So you try to put your triangle, uh, your Villariva inside. Shouldn't be too easy, see? And this arm is gonna block. I just want you to play with this. Shoot for a triangle, see, put your knee on the floor, go high, mess around here a bit, feel it out, then go back. After you feel safe there, then play around here. You're gonna try to put your feet very relaxed, so I can show, okay? Put your foot inside my knee, block this, great. Put your foot inside my elbow, put your foot inside my elbow. Your foot inside my elbow. Thank you. Go back. Play around from that a little bit. Okay, and then we follow up with the next part of the class. Try. So you fell around a little bit, some things happen. And now we're gonna see. So what I usually try to do when I when I learn a new technique, it can be any technique, I first have to show I have to be sure my hands and my feet are in the correct spot that I want that I want it to be. And then the next thing I'm gonna try to do is see if I can survive there and keep that for a certain amount of time. And I'm gonna see my partner's reactions. And the next step, and this is for every technique I do, is see how I can use my, my partner's reactions in my favor. I also see what his attacks are and how I can stop his attacks fr from there. Basically try to stay there forever. See how I can use his motions. Third step is gonna be, my opponent is not moving at all. 
How can I force him to make the previous reactions that I can use in my favor? And the last step is going to be, we both, well, then you play the same game from bottom. So you both know the, the game from top and bottom or, or well, or, or both standing or whatever you are. And then the last step is just play the game and, and see if you can uh, like play the chess game and trick each other in, into playing the game. Can I use it again, please? Yeah. <clears throat> so, we're down again. So whenever we're here, so what, what can happen? I'm not going to go too deep about the triangle. So the first thing was here, he, go, he shoots a triangle, go for it. You put one knee on the floor, stay high. Yeah. And now basically, for, for this part, check my video from last year, the King's Gambit. It's one hour and a half, one hour class, just about how to survive from here. But just quickly, if you keep your hand inside the elbow, keep your elbow open, don't let him control his arms. He can fight now, please. It's gonna be hard to finish me. And whenever he does grab, he offers his head, you go forward. It's incredibly hard to, uh, to finish people from there. And this goes for whole close guard. If you start stacking people from close guard, it is very hard for them to fight, to fight on bottom. And I may realize this a long time ago in Jiu Jitsu, it's still considered like uh, against dogma to lean forward often in close guard, which, and I think most of the trouble actually comes when you start to go away from their guard. In reality, the yeah, legs can come, see? and here's where all the attacks are. So, well, you have to play both sides of the game, I believe. So there's another option that can happen from his part. So this is often, see, they start to put their foot inside your knee. See, whenever you go inside, you can choose to block that, that's fine. But to put it inside, see? Whenever you try to put, then your hand can come outside, you can step close, and start to go for the, the headquarter position. Yeah? So you're here, so try to put your foot inside. Usually when he, go, when he goes to his foot, see, I try to step away first. See? Whenever I'm passing guard, I'm always tracking his head. Put your head close to this side. See this when I start to put the la riva. Whenever I go away from his head with my hips, so I roll to the other side, it's when he can start lifting me over there. I can start to get out of balance. In general, every time when you pass guard, keep your weight forward. See, he starts to put his head on one side and you wanna roll at your hip to that side and start pivoting to that side. See? Should he start to push his leg too deep, he opens, he opens potentially an entry for, for leg attacks. If he keeps his knee outside, I cannot do that, but he try to fight from there. It's quite hard, yes? And then often what they do when they come, come, come closer, see here, see? when they feel they don't get anywhere, see? they start to or start putting pressure here, and move the head to the other side. Whenever they put the head to the other side, and so you can step over, go here, and block the leg. And now you're in the head quarter. What is important in the headquarter position, the same as in every position, see, weight on your toes, keep forward. So you can test this, we're on the, balancing ourselves on the, on the beach ball. If I'm here, see, push with your knee, that should not happen. See, that's like an initial big mistake. So I go forward, see, push with your knee. I put a little bit of tension on my grip here. See, push forward, not falling, great. Another thing about keeping your weight backwards, see, try, uh, break, break my grip. It's quite easy if my weight is backward to break my grip. But if I keep my weight forward, see, now try to break it, it's going to be harder. Even to the point of, if, even if you don't have a grip and you lean forward, see, break, I push my hand away, it's hard if I put weight into my hand. So grips are not getting stronger by pulling them, they're getting stronger by putting your weight into them. Okay, so think about that. See, if I'm here, you, you try to break my grip, I lean forward. At that moment, he's not using his hand for anything else, usually he can use it to start passing his guard. Now basically from here, what happens? And every single time you put your head on this side, again, I'm gonna roll up my hip to that side and pivot in a little bit. <coughs> Will I be able to pass? Not really, but you wait a bit, see? If he stays here, I like to go for the head, keep rotating in, see? And I wait, I wait. How will you react to this? Sorry? How will you react to this? Cool. I can so keep I coming closer, keep rotating in, potentially get a long step, or go back. If it doesn't like pressure, they shift their head out again. Uh, and that's where you're gonna get the knee slap. I could go way more technical and deeper into this. I just want to give you the main idea how, how it works today. Another thing about this one, if I'm here, see, and I start to reach for his head before I rotate, it's dangerous. You can't because when I catch, now you can address my with the frame my grip. See? Keep tight. Mm -hmm. okay. And I start to rotate in, move your head away. See, that's when it starts to get dangerous. He can potentially even reco recover his guard. Put your foot on my hip, this move my hip. And now it gets, it gets worse. But what I like to do is here, look, you keep your hand closed, see? You put pressure, 
and now I will grab something else. Maybe it goes underneath my leg. See, okay, good. Now I can block his head so to rotate closer. There's a lot of games you can play with his legs here, but initially these things work, work well and then you have to go deeper. For example, step out, long step pass. He switches his head to the other side. Get your head out and rotate back. Get the knee slide, put your knee there. And start passing on that side as well. And the other side of it, if I'm here, see? You can either put your head on that side, I rotate in, see? You can push through, put your weight, just slide your knee through here, and pass on that side. So once again, from the beginning, right here, he puts his head on one side, put the trap with my hip and pivot it in, stay here. He puts his head on the other side again, then board the hand, step over, lower your base, keep your weight forward, hide your hand. You wait for the set to go to one side, maybe go this side this time. Then I rotate in this side, keep my weight forward. You wait for it. Good patient. Keep the set to the other side, rotate in. Keep hiding, wait for it to get a grip. Walk the head, keep rotating. If you drop down, it becomes harder to move the leg. If you stay here, you can lift up right and go back. Of course, you can block. There is things you can figure out later along the way. Move again, he puts his head on that side, keep it in. See? Put his head now on that side. Yep. Give you the same time to put your new knee through. That's it. Here's the salt just from there. Okay, so start playing here again. And you go for it. Okay, good luck. I see so few people, uh, people get confused with how to roll the hip where. Okay? So what I'm gonna tell now, this applies to every single guard pass as I understand it. I'm not saying it's the way it always is. I'm just saying how I understand it and how I try to practice guard. And I'm going to explain it from this look. For me, the, the, the most basic and easy guard pass to explain is this. Is to go close and go for a stack pass. Okay? And this is a very good thing to understand, uh, position to understand all our guard passes. Okay, so first of all, it teaches you it's very bad to have bad posture. Okay? This is not a guard. We can, I believe Jeff can say you don't get any points. Do, well, see any MMA fight, consider any, like any self-defense fight, this is not a guard. It's the illusion of a guard, because there is no point. And that is not bad by itself, it's, it's, it's a fun game. But one of the worst things too, for you to happen, whenever you get stacked is this. If I keep my weight over, like gently push me away, please. Now straight, straight up. This is the worst thing you can do for your back. It's as healthy as squatting 100 kilos with a bent back and then pushing it back over. Is it a bad posture? Is this a bad posture? Yeah. It is not a bad posture. <laughs> it's, it's a bad posture to put strength into. It's definitely valuable to be here. So sometimes even if you get triangle, see, like you just posture see, to, to slide out, it's, it's okay. It's just not an okay posture to start lifting weight or to press someone away, yeah? Now, what does it teach us on me also? If I'm here, sorry, double under, if I put my weight a bit too much backwards, push your hip up, please. Now that kind of worked. Should he do that? No, he should still not do that to push me away because I'm a silver bag gorilla that weighs 300 kilos. If you push me away, it's slightly better. But what you should do is bend your legs, yeah, keep tight, and now walk away. It also works, see? Unless you're against the cage, you're against the wall, and, and, and on the stress, different rules apply. You can occasionally push someone away and do the wrong thing. You can do wrong squats. And just know, you get like a million reps in your body to do perfect, even perfect squats will, will destroy your body over time because we get older and, and well, wear and tear. But every time you do a bad squat, you lose 10 reps, okay? So do, the, do them over and over and over on training, that, that's bad. Okay, you know, stress on competition, self-defense or whatever, then you can make, do less ideal things. But just to explore this is a good thing, I, I believe, yeah? Now the next thing, look. So whenever I put forward pressure in someone's guard and I wait for it, see, he's got to react to that. If I'm like a, a very eager, strong person the first time in his class and I run over, boom, put your head sideways, he can use it to use momentum to recover. But if I train with someone, an older person or a first day person who doesn't even know a back roll, and I run him over like a train here, that might damage your neck. So whenever you put pressure, you put gentle, constant pressure, and you allow your opponent to make mistakes without costing him his life. If you do mountain climbing, what do you do? You're gonna practice on a wall, 
with a rope and make sure that every mistake you make is not your last mistake. When I practice with my partner, I'm gonna make sure every mistake he makes teaches him something. It teaches this, it teaches him to put his head away. Now, whenever someone puts his head away on one side, put your head away, backward, yeah, head here, yeah. And I keep running forward. He can roll out and this can lead to a sweep or to a guard recovery. Got that? So again, when I put my weight forward, wait for it. If he puts his head on one side here and I shift, keep your head here, and I shift my hip to the other side, it gives him space to move. It, it does not increase pressure. Is this bad? It can be so, if you're, like, if you're more like a dynamic passer, maybe that can be good for your game. I, I don't like it, but it's, it's, a good, it's a good option for you. So you're here, okay, good. If you want to put your head on this side, you want to increase pressure, I'm gonna roll my hip to the same side. See, good. Meanwhile, if I give space, he can use that to alleviate pressure from his neck. So I want to keep tight and don't give that. And even if he gives it, I'm still gonna maintain my pressure. I have to be more wary about my limbs now and it gets more complicated and open the game. So I hide that as well here. Put your head more on that side, good. If I keep rotating forever, at some point, I will get past his legs. Okay, good. So, what will your partner often do? He will put his head to the other side. He has to overcommit. That's so where you can grip over, keep your weight. Okay, good, and now he's stuck on that side. Now, whenever I can get his head stuck, switch your head to the other side, he cannot do it, and I can keep increasing pressure forever. Oh, I kept the gap. Okay, good, I didn't keep my shield up. Now he can start recovering his guard. This is, for me, every single guard pass ever. So, now we're mimicking the same thing over here. Good. <clears throat> for example, he puts a foot, okay, it's just more hooks that he can get. Good initial thing to start. Like this is something you're usually gonna get. I'm gonna show the entry from standing uh, in the end. So I get the color. If you grip too high, my grip can slide. If I keep my grip too low, it can kill me over. So right below the armpit. Put your fist in the armpit. <clears throat> your arm here blocks. Put your weight over. He's in the center. Put your hand on the floor. Great. What he should be doing here is scurry on his back backwards. Good, good, go, go, go. Good, can happen. You can still use this to go inside. Maybe that would be the correct reaction on his part. Push me away. That would be hard, this. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I try to stay here, go close. Put his head on one side. Put it in. Keep your weight over here. Put your, well, like the, the way his spine is right now, I can mimic this side. See, put your back straight. Do it great. You can still try to, like, try to mimic it as good as possible. Yeah, put his head on the other side. Start to go to that side. It's like a very early, like King's Gambit tri tri triangle, like, like, like bait here. Go back. This time, he puts his head on the other side. Okay, I can start rolling my hip already in and pivot. Good, switch to the other side again, go back. Now, one option was he puts his foot inside my knee. Great, he puts it. Usually it goes together with a recentering. I recenter, put yourself in the middle. There is no way I can pass this guard from here. I go in, put your head away. So to go out of balance. Go that side, start to go out of balance. Keep your weight forward in the middle. Run away from me. I can try to fall. This hand, if you grip too early, control both of my sleeves, please. Or my, actually, my elbows are better. Yeah, control. It's still possible, but keep your elbows tight. See? Now I cannot make any mistakes. And I get trapped, I cannot post my hand. It starts to get more dangerous. So I like to keep my hand away in the beginning. If it were a real fight, slap and hide, slap and hide. <clears throat> Goes underneath my leg, step a little bit, see? Keep your weight forward and rotate in. You wait, increase pressure slowly, make sure you cannot get any hooks in. Reach to the other side, go, go back, I'm balancing my ball here. And then you wait for him to make mistakes. For example, stretch your knee, listen to what I said, stretch your, hip, your knee, push your way with your feet. You push away, okay, and let you get inside. And it's here, so I rotate in. Great. Rotate the head out. I can start. And that's how every guard pass goes. Increase passion by rotating your hip to the same head to the head. Wait for him to react. And every time on the switch, you, you, uh, you, you, you gain some, uh, some, some terrain. Yeah? <clears throat> now, what you can add from here. This is useful in general for every. Uh, can you a spider guard, please? On both sides, double spider. Okay, good. So, the usual direction here, what people have against spider guard is to grip here. And then they tell you to close the elbows. It's very hard to close your elbows whenever you get a grip, because when you grip, you actually open your elbows. And spider guard is a fight 
against you, I keep my, me keep my elbows closed and you opening my elbows. So whenever I get caught in spider guard, catch please, I don't like to catch the pants. I like to put my hands here. So now play spider guard, it's gonna be very hard. I keep your shield, and now I can start going inside. Other thing, so now I'm gonna show it from here, so I catch, I'm here, and he starts to put his foot inside my elbow. To get my, get my sleeve, relax, relax, relax. Put your foot inside my elbow. And the inside, good. Boom. Whenever I grab, you can use this to manipulate me. So what I do, go inside and be here. You just think about uh, Napoleon, you know? Put your hand on your chest. So you catch again, hand inside, close your elbow, and also try to manipulate, which are, it's, it's gonna be hard. We can use this part right now to go in, see? So close, and it starts to make the stack again. What will it do from here? Two possible reactions. Three, stay in the middle and run away. That's the best thing. Relax, see? Wait. Okay. Initially, people are often gonna put your head, the, head, the leg away on one side. If I cross, you can use to recover your guard. So stay in the middle, push me away. Go in, so you reclaim your grip. Do the same hop again. Other reaction. So put your foot inside. Go forward. Bring your head leg to the outside. So back here, see? A lot of good position to start passing. And every single time it goes for that triangle, which we often get, this leads to the over under pass. Got it so far? Let's try. Now I've got a question, for example, um, what do you do when they grab your heel with, uh, with, with De La Riva? Well, how do you deal with anything? In general, I do not like to break grips. I know this it is not wrong to do, by the way. You can definitely go here, break that grip and, and continue. But these things always require a bit of speed when you break grip. Because when I break the grip, see, I'm actually not, not uh, solving this problem. Well, I'm avoiding the problem. I'm breaking the problem. Instead of finding the key to open the door, I could see the door. Which is not always the wrong thing. Well, if I, if I break this grip, for example, okay, I break it, see? While I'm breaking it, he can do something else. Yes, mm -hmm. and often, okay, you break the grip, okay, and now he gets my sleeve or maybe he weaves, and I have another problem, and, and so on and so on. So you can both, most definitely break the grip and, and play from there, it's, it's, it's very valid. But what do you do if you cannot break the grip? Good, okay, so he gets my color here. Often you say, ah, break the grip. Okay, might happen. But how do you break the grip? And what if you cannot break the grip? Well, maybe first make sure you can survive without breaking that grip, see? Better already, right? And now I can work on maybe breaking that grip, and, and that's it too. But like in general, every grip he has, I like first to not break it and see if I, if, I, if I can work around it. And maybe convince him to let go of his grip. So one thing you can, for example, have, ha have happened. Put your hand here, and also you can get my, get my, get my heel grip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you will, you will take this. Or it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's, that's valid, see, if, okay, so let's, let's take whatever, look, this is, this is a problem. Ever, anyone ever found himself in this position in, uh, when playing Jiu-Jitsu? Mm -hmm. It's common, right, the foot is on the hip, then our is about to be put, he caught my heel, great. Let's first see what, what can happen to make it even worse. If I leave completely over here, lift me up, he can start making me fly. Good. What else can you do if you manage to put it in the Riva? See? What I really lost here is, a, is the ability to rotate like effectively to that side, because I'm breaking my own knee. Okay, good. So that would be harder to deal with that part. What is this foot about? Well, put, push me away. Yeah. He can spread me out. Great. And instead of pushing me away, he can also walk away. And I would, and I would uh, actually make, uh, make the same thing happen. Okay, good. As long as I have this hand, see, I can always pose something. This, this is my, my, uh, my lifeguard. So first of all, let's see what I have to do. I don't want to give more, more, uh, like more space for this. I'm gonna keep my knee rotated open. That's initially. I don't want to be keeled over all the way, so I have to keep my weight a little bit on my toes, a little bit, a little bit backwards, and potentially I'm gonna make, fix my posture. This hand, this is my lifeguard, so I don't want to like give, give control of him to that. Push him, push him your foot, please. I don't want my hip to go away, so I have to push in my. Hip. Basically, I'm doing a deadlift here. This hand here manages also to control the distance. Doesn't allow him to go away, so that's so here's where I am. I want to remove this foot from my hip, so the pressure. Often what you see is that people step away and then he just follows. Mm -hmm. So go back, one step back please. So I have to stop his, put some pressure, I have to stop his pressure, and I'm gonna use my shield to block his hook. 
I want to push his foot in his butt. I cannot use my hand for that, but if I put my, my Napoleon grip, or whatever you call it, put your foot hip, so keep tight. So now the battle became, can I get my hip closer to his hip? Once I'm here, I'm gonna use my shield to block his foot where it is, and now I can remove my hip from his foot. What will he do from here? More often than not, go for a triangle. Oof, thank you very much. You gave me another chance to attack. Maybe you got smart this time. Put your foot outside again. You saw it. You okay, boop. You go back here. You always play around this part. Now, if you make a mistake here, posture-wise, then it gets dangerous. But these problems are universal. This is not a problem. Stop. Stop. Go back. Yeah. This is not a problem. Just limited to this guard. These are the things you have to fix on an everyday basis in all your positions. I can show you a million techniques, but if you don't fix your posture, your engagement, your connection, then everything is gonna be much, much harder, yes? And again, when we are a partner, see, snag me down. Oh, okay, good. I saw the mistake, go back. Gently pull me down. Ah, now I also saw. So, I'm balancing on my beach ball. Pull my head, snag my head down. Thank you. This is me being the first time on my ball, and every once in a while, the coach come past and he kick my ball away. Boom. Thank you, coach. Okay, good. So definitely a place for that. But when you start exploring techniques, see, gently try to look for small mistakes. And, and that's it, relax. So again, for this here, fix my posture, push hip. This is the battle, I'm not always gonna win. If I lose this battle, it's because you, you were better in keeping my hip away. But with the pressure, remove, see, good. Too much tension, I'm gonna wait for it. You release tension for a split second. Okay, boom, remove your hip. Great, he moves his head like a side. Good, brings it back inside. Good. Great, it brings his feet out again. Ah, nice. <laughs> you keep playing with, with those things, see? Maybe he puts his head on that side now. Okay, good, got the over-under pass again. It's like a hub for, for every single game there is really. Now, look, <clears throat> stand up, please. When you apply this to competition or standing jiu-jitsu or just on training, you can do the same thing as well, of course. I always like to go for, for this grip first. Whenever I play, whenever I play competition, I have a game plan. And I can say, okay, my game plan is to pull guard. Yeah, but who knows? It's like many things have to go correct before I have my good guard. So the one thing I can be sure about at the beginning is win the grip fight. I'm not gonna win the grip fight always, but you make like very short planned victories. So for example, his hands are here. If I have to go for your grip, see, I give you my hand. Good. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna start getting his hand. Maybe he goes for a grip. I can block it. Okay, now I got my grip. That's the first part. Then now my game becomes, am I gonna pull guard? I'm gonna do guard pass, I'm gonna go for a takedown. If that leg is forward, I will go for a takedown. If he hides that leg, I can play a bit around to see if the leg comes. Yes? Until like early black belt, my game was always pull half guard. And that went for many years, two different four. That went for many years correct until this started to happen. I started to pull half guard. And the guy slides with his knee through, boom. And it was like three fights in a row like that because I don't know if people figured it out. So, okay, let's stop doing it. Let's, let's sit on the half guard. Now, what was the problem with sitting on the half guard is the person in front of me got time to start pulling guard himself. And then this started to happen. So I put my arm here, not pull guard. Great. And you go right into this, to this game where I actually want to be now. Like many different ways of guard pulls can happen. Okay, put my hand inside. Let's side go. Very nice. And that is the game. Can it fail? Everything can fail. But that is my, my game plan about it. Now, a good one you can try to do, but very often happens on training, is uh, put a guard by putting this foot on my hip, please. Yeah, and you block here right away. So put your foot a bit more on my hip. Yeah, great. Now you start. Wait, you wait here. Look, wait for a second. Wait here. Where is this hat? It's on that side. Let's start to walk here. Look, how will it react? Can happen every time you invert, it's a different go back off it. Every time you invert, see, start second. Wait, 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 wait. I said, wait. Oh, sorry, sorry. Because I cannot explain in real time all every micro adjustment. See? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no worries. So, here, yeah, if you invert, okay, you stack him more. What happens when you stack people? They will always put their head out, they go back to the inside. See, mm -hmm. and you play, play, play until he commits one of the fatal errors, which would be one would be. Triangle, that's always happening. That's one, go back. Relax. 
Oh, sorry, put the weight back. Put your foot inside my knee again. Step over. And that is basically it. See? So, and no V version, because I have to hurry up. With the instead of wrapping here, you put your arm on here. And this is the shield. And now, fine, go. There is. And then it leads to over and under passing. See, that is like the, so it's my entry point for different guards of uh, types of car play. If you, if you roll with me here, <coughs> well, 99% sure I will, I will try to play that game with you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask the rest of the week. I will upload the class as well, so you can uh, re-watch it, follow it on my, my channel, just my name and on YouTube, and that's it. So, any questions about anything? No? Great, thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like this class, I highly recommend you also watch my class on the King's Gambit I gave in the Zen Camp in 2019. Let me know in the comments if you reached the end of this video.